Amen. So good to have everybody here this morning. To have Ricky Lee visiting with us. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Asher's birthday today.
lift up Sister Heard. She's having surgery in the morning. Amen. Let's pray for the Sharp and Summers family. Sister Sharp's dad passed away. Let's pray for comfort for them. Amen. Let's lift up Barbara Peterson and Brother Warren. Amen. If you have a special unspoken, signify those by the raising of your hands. Amen. There's a lot of those, but we know that God is more than able. Amen. Amen. If you want prayer, we invite you to come forward this morning. Amen. Or you can stand out in the aisle. Either way, we'll get to you. We will pray and we will trust God to meet the needs. Amen. Join me in lifting up all of these needs to God this morning. Lord, we praise your mighty name today, sweet Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Lord, I pray that you meet every need here, spoken and unspoken alike. We know, Lord God Almighty, that no matter what the need is, that you are more than able to meet those needs, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, we cast our cares, Lord, on our knees, our aches, our pains, our illnesses at your feet this morning. Oh, hallelujah, sweet spirit God, sweet Lord God, as you will. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus Christ, you are mighty and glorious. I speak healing in this place this morning. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every knee. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise.
here this morning. Amen. Good to have Brother Anselmi ministering to us this morning. Everybody say, God bless Brother Anselmi. Amen. Brother Anselmi.
13 to 16, I refuse to go back. Would you stand for the reading of the word? Hebrews 11, 13 to 16. Here, the writer of Hebrews is talking in chapter 11 uh, about some of the old faithfuls. And he says, These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded. Well, keep that in your brain. They were persuaded of them. And look also, and embrace them, and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Am I talking to us right now? For they that say such things declare, declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, he might have had opportunity to have returned. But now, now versus then, now, but now they desire a better country, that is, and heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he had prepared for them a city. Jesus said in John 14, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also. And I don't want to miss it for nothing in this world. Would you pray, brother? Lord, thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity to be here. We ask you, Lord, to anoint this man of God to bless his word. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. And you may be seated. Let me read that same section of scripture in another uh, version. It says, all these people were still living by faith when they died. That might seem like a, just an unimportant statement, but it says to me that they made it to the end. They went on through. What good would it do me to speak in tongue, run the aisle, shout hallelujah, and not make it until the end? Why start and not finish? How many people would have let down beside myself? All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, and they admitted they were aliens and strangers on the earth. People who see such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. Any place in heaven got to be better than any place down here. But on the first spot. Yes. I want to go. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, that they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, instead, put that in your mind. They were looking for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he has prepared a city for them. I think we ought to just stop right here and go eat. In the book of Hebrews, the preacher was talking to a bunch of people who were on the fence. They didn't know if they wanted to be a Christian or not. They were under persecution. They would pass by the temple and they saw the big to do of the temple, the priesthood. The big building, and it all looks so good, it sounds so, so good, but was it good? No. <laughs> and the writer is trying to get them to see that don't give up on what you've got. Right. He talked to them about Abraham, about Jacob, Isaac, Sarah, and the promises that they had. You see, they, they didn't believe in just a pie in the sky. Don't you shout for shout's sake, but shout because God had the victory on Calvary's cross. Yeah. Jesus 
was not uh, a victim of circumstances. He came for that purpose and accomplished it. What a victory. What an accomplishment. The Lord made on Calvary. You see, these people believed in someone. God. They believed in something. The Word of God. The promises of God. And it is just a one call from God. And everything changed. You remember the first time you heard the truth? I never heard this before. Wow! And you couldn't drink it away. You couldn't drug it away. You couldn't sleep it away. It was there all the time. When God puts his hooks in your jaw, something got to happen. Something got to happen. When God begins to draw you, something got to take place. You can't sleep right. You can't eat right. You can't drink right. And you know too much. In 1978, I went to Jamaica. I had a bleeding. It ended up I had a bleeding ulcer. I was just hemorrhaging a bunch of my, uh, mama blood, and I was never in good shape like it was in 1978. But there I was. I found myself in the hospital, and my head went down, and I could feel myself drifting off into a blackness. I wasn't saved then. And I said, "Oh God, I know too much." Look at your neighbor and say, you know. You know. You know. I'm not going to say that joke about that. You know. But you know. Everything changes. And everybody and everyone, you know, that wanted to uh, keep Abraham from leaving war of the Chaldees. What's the matter with you? You've had too much stuff. Too much moon, moonlight, or mucha. <laughs> Hallelujah. But when God says, let's go, man, that's all different. Yeah, right. It's different from somebody telling you, let's go. When God says, let's go. Listen, it's not wrong leaving everything behind. Why would Abraham leave his business, leave his friends, leave his, uh, the people he knew? It's very simple. God said, let's go. And when the truth comes, you've just got to obey it. you just got to obey it. A question you got to ask yourself. Why did they care about me when I was dead skunk in the middle of the room? <laughs> Why didn't folks worry about me when I was in trouble? But just because I wanted to follow God, all of a sudden, all heads came up. I don't care who the hair is. But I'm going to follow Jesus. Yeah. Right. Maybe a little rebellion cracked on from the old world, but I'm going to do what I have to do, yeah. no matter who doesn't like it. Right. It doesn't matter family and friends. Hey, we're going to make it by the grace of God. Because we're strangers here. We're pilgrims here. And we're headed for a land that God has made. That God has built. You know, it's got to be beautiful there. I go to prepare a place for you. Don't it make you want to go? I want to run to the church when I have right here and right now. We're not 
go to New Orleans, when I do it in my way, when you do God's way, go to the New Jerusalem. Inducted into the army, I thought about joining the Marines. A witches laughed at me when I said that. Do you think I'd be the uh, Marine material? <laughs> I would, if I was a soldier, I'd look for no soldier. One that knew how to stay alive. One that knew the tricks of the trade. One that you how to get wrong. Hey, listen, and what a place is going to be. Uh, Paul said this, Nay, all the things are more than conquerors to him that loved us. Yes, yes. More than conquerors? Yes. Sometimes I get tired of preaching to those who are always in trouble. What about people that have the victory in Jesus? No how our death, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <laughs> Notice in all this litany of things, Paul didn't mention the past. He talked about present, talked about things to come, but he talked about the past. Because your past can immobilize you. It can freeze you in your tracks. It can slow you down and make you, uh, that you're not doing nothing for the kingdom of God. It can make you, you're neither good to God or man. And like Naaman, uh, he was a great man with his master, but everywhere he went, there was this dark cloud that hung over him. He was a leper. He was a leper. Like the sages of old, you've got to become convinced before you commit. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I, you, you've heard the old breakfast tune, uh, the chicken was involved, but the pig was committed. <laughs> he, he, he gave it all. you got to be convinced of who God is. Yeah. And what he says is true. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. It is impossible to please him. For he that come unto God must believe that he is, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. So, you have been filled with the Holy Ghost. You now have eternal life. You have been promised a new body. You have been promised a new city. He said, Behold, I make everything new. Don't ever get tired of living for God. Don't ever get tired of living for God. Don't ever get tired of Acts 2 38. Don't ever get tired of living holy. Don't ever get tired of living like the church is supposed to live and not like the world is supposed to live. Come on, children of God. And you've come out of that darkness under the kingdom of a dear son. What more could we ask for than being saved? Sometimes you get you gotta talk to yourself. 
I'm not going back. Self, you're not going back. Flesh, you're not going back. Spirit, you're not going back. Just ain't going back. I'm like the old cook used to say on a boat. He said, uh, I don't want none. He said, that you're gone for so long. He was right. He, he was right. And then you got to ask yourself, back to what? The world is empty. The world is bankrupt. The world is, you came from is devoid of Jesus. Devoid of Jesus. Uh, uh, it doesn't know the Lord at all. Is it, is it, it is in darkness. In fact, John said, this whole world lies in wickedness. Wickedness. Uh, uh, listen, it's bad enough for God to live here, but it will have to be part of all what's going on. Hallelujah. When this world, but not of this world. So, when Abraham left Ur of the Chaldees, they went to Haran, to half the house. Yeah. Do you want to preach a little bit on that? Yeah. See, some people are not willing to go that far. Some people are not willing to go all the way. Some people are satisfied with the halfway house. But you can't live for God halfway. No. It don't mean you're perfect, but you do the best you can. And, and you grow as you go. And you tell, you tell yourself, I'm going to make it by the grace of God. I'm going to make it. There's nobody going to stop me. There's nobody can stop me. I was telling Brother Norsworthy, I said, everybody that wants to go to hell, there's nobody can stop them. But everybody that wants to go to heaven, ain't nobody can stop them. Hallelujah. And I'm glad it's that way. Some people don't want to go all the way. The book of Exodus tells us there was a way out. There's no way to come out of Egypt except God help them. They were slaves. And, but the book of Leviticus tells them there's a way in. Closer relationship with God. The book, the, the Gospels tells us there's a way out. Jesus died, was buried, was erected. The book of Acts tells us there's a way in. And that is through the power of the Holy Ghost. Are you born again? Then hang in there, and hang in there, and hang in there like a snap does. It goes all over the world. You send it anywhere you want. You put a snap on it, that snap is going to be there when the mail gets there. Yeah. That's how it is with the Holy Ghost. We should hang in there till the end, till Jesus comes, and refuse to go back to what we want. Hallelujah. You see, he is the author. 
He has the pencil, but he's also the finisher, and he has the eraser too. It's called the blood of the Lamb. He washed all our sins away. They even had to change the ledger in heaven. When we got saved, they had to add our name to the book. Hello? They even had to make room for us. Push over, angel. We're coming through. We're going to live for God. We're part of the bride of Christ. We're going to live for Him. And when He comes back, He's coming back for us. We've got something the angels can't have. And that's Him. Yeah. Living on the inside. Hallelujah. I'm glad for Jesus. Uh, getting saved and getting saved, heaven rejoice. Heaven rejoice. I, I Boy, if I was a sinner, I'd run all around this place and make heaven happy. I'd say, here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Save me. I will rejoice in the Lord because the Lord rejoices over one sinner that is saved. Hallelujah. So, so uh, uh, it lets me know that uh, uh, heaven, like the prodigal son, threw a party when I got saved. Right. Hallelujah. Threw a whole, in fact, the father ran to meet him. Don't you think that God was glad when he said yes to him? When you said yes to the gospel, don't you think he was happy? He, listen, this is commercial number two. When heaven re rejoices, we should rejoice. When heaven shouts, we should shout. When, when, when God runs, we should run. Could somebody run for me right now? Would you run around here for me? Would you? Run now? I can't run. Would you run for me? Would somebody else run for me? Everything, the lights came on. It's like four. Oh, 
God had a better idea. Is it like a Motel 6? We leave the light on for you. Hallelujah. And the lights have been on for a long time. And, and, and I'm glad. I'm glad he left the lights on. What if God would backslide from what he is? Aren't you glad he's a good God? What if God is going to be a, being a mean God? We wouldn't stand a chance. But I'm glad God is faithful. And I can have this resurrection every day if I want to. Every day if I want to. I, I, I don't want to take so great a salvation for granted. Don't neglect so great salvation. That word neglect, the art of Hebrews was telling them, don't be careless about this. Don't take this lightly. Don't disregard it. It is the only way we're going to make it. Excuse me, Mark. It is the only way we're going to make it. Through the Holy Ghost. I don't want to take Jesus for granted. I want him to be part, not just part of the day, I want him to be the center of every day. Talk to the Lord in the morning. Talk to the Lord at the daytime when you're just moving around. Talk to the Lord at night. Just, just talk to the Lord all the time. And you'll find that when there's prayer meeting, you're not going to a new prayer meeting. You're just changing location. Still talking to God. Talk to Him all the time. I started another show boat, and I talk to Jesus all the time. God, I need you to help me do this. And I need you to help me do that. And cut this and, and cut that. I, I don't want to take him for granted because it cost him everything. Do you know what happened to you? Do you realize that when you got the Holy Ghost, what really happened to you? Do you realize what it cost him on that cross? The pain, the suffering, the shame, the sorrow, the rejection, the darkness. And people won't want me to turn my back on that. No way, Jose. Refuse to turn your back on Jesus. Being saved and staying saved ought to be the most important thing in the world to you. It's more important than your job. It's more important than your money. It's more important than things. Being saved and staying saved. And what a world is coming. I, I, I just can't wait for the next world. We're not citizens of this world anymore. We belong to the New Jerusalem. Hello? And Paul said, For I reckon, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory of which shall be revealed in us. Man, what's coming is better than what is not. Not even worthy of being compared. He said, We shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. John said this, Beloved, now, not yesterday, now, not tomorrow, now are we the sons of God. And it did not yet appear what it shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? That's a Bible. All you can do is just imagine. They got uh, keyhole views of what it's like to have a resurrected body in the Bible, but uh, we haven't been there yet. Just can't wait. It's got to be better than this. Got to be better. And how fast is it going to happen? Paul said, in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, as fast as light can enter into your eye. That's how fast the rapture is going to take place. That's how fast you're going to be changed. And what a privilege. What an honor. What promises are made to us. I want to make it. Not just I need to make it, but I want to make it. So priority number one is I must be safe. And I must stay safe. And come to church, I can tell That's why I need the body of Christ. I need the church. I need to see other people that believe like I believe. Hallelujah. They will change. Listen, I need to take the moment in light of eternity. This is where new converts can mess up 
Things are going to change. But don't fall for the night. Because it can throw you. Uh, there is going to be a battle. There is going to be a struggle. And, and some may be going through it right now. But you need to see the big picture. Not just the down. Because it can throw you. I don't need to sacrifice the future for the present. This is going to pass. Listen, I was in a hurricane offshore on a tugboat. They had 25 to 35 uh, foot waves. They had 100 miles an hour wind. You go into a, a trough and you can almost see heaven. And then you come up on a crest, you can almost see heaven. But I learned one for six days it stayed roughly. I learned that every storm runs out of wind. Every storm runs out of rain. Every storm runs out of waves. Sooner or later, I'm going to be dancing on top of what was troubling me. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 I have choices. I had voices to pick from. And so now I need to listen to the voice of conscience more than the voice of the crowd. The crowd will be left behind and know his day. And the crowd is going to be left behind in our day at the rapture of the church. So I, I, I want to make it. And you know what I found out? I'm, uh, next month I'll be 73. It's cheaper to do it right the first time. How many of you have ever bought a weeder that was cheap and I had to go back and buy a real one? <laughs> it, it would have been cheaper the first time. And so it is to live for God. It don't matter what sacrifice you have to make. It's cheaper. Yeah. You do it right the first time. Do it right the first time. Uh, notice in, the, in Chronicles, uh, Hezekiah was speaking to the priest. I'm almost finished. Aren't you glad? <laughs> I'm hungry by now. <laughs> Hezekiah, and said unto, the, unto them, Hear ye, ye Levites. Sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord God of your fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. Hezekiah said, carry the filthiness out of the holy place. I, I want to have revival here. Yeah. I want things to get better. But, but, but there's only supposed to be the golden cat. The table of showbread, the altar of incense in the holy place. How did all that filthiness get there? How did it get there? How can how can this be? How can there be rubbish and clutter in the holy place? It, it can be explained like this. How many of you have a junk drawer? <laughs> you didn't intend for it to be a junk drawer. But over time, you can put stuff in there, stuff in there, stuff, and finally became a junk drawer. Well, that's how it is in living for God. This is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And over a period of time, if we need to let it in, we can put rubbish in the holy place. Things that don't belong there. Things we know, we know better. We know things that are not right that we should have. So Hezekiah said, Ken House, I want to have a little revival over here. And if Hezekiah can have a revival, so can I. That's my first step to clean the house. Clean this house and clean the house I live in. To make it right that God wants to be there. Refuse to go back to what you were. Refuse to be what you used to be. I don't want to go back to life without Jesus, no matter what the cost? Right. The musicians came. Or the magicians. Because you gotta have to pull a rabbit out of a hat here. In Exodus chapter 12, it was their first Passover. They were in Egypt. The Israelites were in Egypt as slaves. And God said, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Wow. 
a new beginning. Just think, I can have a new beginning. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of the month, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to his house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it, according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your camel for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Just like that. When you got the Holy Ghost, you had a new beginning. And you could have a new beginning every day. Spend time rubbing shoulders with Jesus. Let him rub off on you. It's got to be better than who I am. He's got to be better. And so Moses came to them. This was their emancipation proclamation. I'm about to set you free. Do you really want to be free? Like Lazarus, he got resurrected, but he's still bound by great balls. They had to loosen and let him go. How free do you want to be? God can free you from your past, from your present, from your future, from whatever binds you, God can make you free. But now notice in the text that we read, in verse 3, he called it Elam. In verse 4, he called it Elam. In verse 5, he called it your man. The closer he got, the more personal God, which is that? I want this to be my church. I want it to be my gospel, my salvation, my Jesus. I want everything to become personal. Uh, perch out, therefore, the old evil, that you may be a new, as you are only for in Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Am I making Jesus personal? Did it become your man? I've got to tell myself, the world didn't give it to me. And the world is not going to take it away. What's a church here was asked to preach at a college? He got up to the podium, put aside his hat, his cigar, his cane. And he said, but two words to all the students that were there. He said, never give up. Never give up. And he sat back down. I refuse to go back. I'm going to be here when the church door opens. I'm going to be here when God is here. I'm going to be here to hear the preaching. And, and, and I'm going to break the news to you. you. This is probably the first time you hear it. But I'm going to tell you, your pastor is human. Hello? Your pastor and his wife is human. They go to catch up. They get in and I get hungry. But I'm going to cut them some slack because they're the chosen of God to lead us. Hello? And I'm going to make you Would you come to the front? Would you lift your hands to God? Would you say, Lord, I refuse to go back? I've been offered a lot of things, and I can do what is all pleasing unto this flesh, but I'm going to crucify it, and I refuse to go back to what I was. I'm going to be faithful to myself. I'm going to be faithful to God, to the Word of God. Whatever my pastor needs, if I can be of my help, I'm going to help. I'm going to make all this personal. I'm going to take it on my shoulders and make it personal. I'm going to make it by the grace of God because I refuse to go back. I refuse to turn around. My spouse and I told her, don't you 
look at me. Go to heaven with or without me. I want my children to go here. There's too many people hanging on my name. I'm going to make it. Because of me. Because of them. I'm going to let them down. Give back up and keep moving along. Amen. That's what he wants. 